Thank you guys for that song. That was uh, that was really awesome. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Katie Peltier. I am a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation and also the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians. I am 16 years old and I'm very thankful to be here today. Uh, hello, my name Okay. Then. Hello, my name is Ethan Black Fox. I am a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. I am 18 years old and I'm happy to be here. Hello, my name is Memphis Yellow. Um, I'm from Standing Rock and I am 18 years old. Thank you. Maya Reynolds and Machiapi. Hello everybody, I shake your heart, or shake your hand with a good heart today. My name is Maya Reynolds and I am 19 years old and I am from the Standing Rock Sea Tribe. Um, before we get started, I wanna let everybody know that uh, this is being live streamed. So whoever can, if you could take out your phone right now and on Facebook, you can go to Respect Our Water or the Standing Rock Youth Council Facebook page and share all of our live videos so that the people that aren't here with us today can still have the opportunity to see this. So we have come to Washington DC for this peaceful demonstration because the Dakota Access Pipeline is currently and has always been operating illegally. And Line 3 is currently putting Anishinaabe land in danger of being contaminated. We feel the need to let the Biden administration and the whole world know that we as indigenous people are done being silenced. We will not allow our sacred lands and waterways to continue to be desecrated. The use and construction of these pipelines needs to stop. Are we ready to put an end to it? Are we ready to put an end to this? Yeah. So our ancestors told us that there was going to be a big black snake coming to attack our people, but there is only one way where we could beat the big black snake, and it is that we stand together in peace and prayer and kill this black snake, but that's the only way we can do it. So we are here today to kill this big black snake in peace and prayer and united. Woo! Yes. April 1st, 2016 was the first day that the Sacred Stone Camp was erected near the path of the Dakota Access Pipeline. What started out as a camp became the 10th largest camp of Dakota. What would, we would like to, we would like the world to know that we fought the Dakota Access Pipeline with no fear and never gave up. Uh, on this, we would like to introduce our, we would like to invite, sorry, our first speaker onto the stage. Morgan Brings Plenty is a youth organizer and social media intern for the Indigenous Environmental Network. They were part of the original fight against Keystone XL and was a water protector at both the Sacred Stone Camp and Chanti Shakoni. They will read the they will read the statement written by the first camper at the Sacred Stone Camp. Hello, my relatives. My name is White Earring. In American English, my name is Morgan Brings Money. I greet you all with a heartfelt handshake. I am from Cheyenne River, and my mother is Wombly Weakonwi, our Eagle Feather Woman. In American, she is known as Joy Braun. My mother and I have been fighting pipelines a long time. I was a teenager, just 15, when we started fighting the Keystone XL. And we, when our relatives from Standing Rock called and asked for help fighting this black snake. The Dakota Access Pipeline. My mother didn't hesitate. She asked the youth from Shine River if they were ready to fight another pipeline. And we said yes. My mom, along with the youth, went to Standing Rock to see how far we can mobilize the fight. There were community meetings, and it was decided that a spirit camp was going to be put up. 
On April 1st, 2016, tribal citizens of Standing Rock, Lakota Nation, and the ally Lakota, Dakota citizens in Lakota, under the group names Chante Tinsha Kinazipo, founded the Sacred Stone Camp near the confluence of the Missouri and Cannonball Rivers near Cannonball in so-called North Dakota. Today, April 1st, is the fifth anniversary of the founding of that camp. My mother, along with her cousin, Wiyaka Eagleman, were the first campers of the New Spirit Camp. She could not be here today because of health issues, some of which are a direct result of the chemicals and brutality we faced during the months-long struggle on the ground. However, she sent a message to you all. And Joy Braun says, my relatives, Morgan is delivering this message for me. I always say she's my mini me. <laughs> so I know it will get to you. That first day was cold, wet, and slushy on the ground. We didn't know what we were going to face in the coming months, but we laid the groundwork with prayer and ceremony. These battles are never short. They are long and filled with struggle. You will be tested like you have never been before. The power of prayer is strong. The struggle to fight Napple and the intuitions of the government we faced off with who put every roadblock in our way, figuratively and literally, has not declared us from moving forward and we will not stop until Dapple is shut down. And all these pipelines, like line three, are stopped. We know that we will win eventually. Today, on this fifth year anniversary, remember the sacrifices that have been made. Tribes from all over the world came to stand together unlike any other time in history. We changed the way so the world looks at us and we changed the direction of how we fight, putting prayer first and indigenizing the struggle. 10 years ago, it was a struggle to get our voices as indigenous people heard. Now we are recognized, not as we should be, but we are least acknowledged in the movement. And no one can say they have not heard of Standing Rock. You youth did that. You the youth helped lead the way for our voice to be heard. And I look forward to the time when the injustices are righted. And we have built not only a world we dream is possible, but a world with hope, love, healing, and free from the fossil fuel addiction. Keep fighting. Keep the dream alive. We stand. 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 All right, thank you, Morgan. Next up, we have Oscar High Elk, joined by Jacelyn Charger, two Lakota relatives from the Cheyenne River Lakota Nation. We come here today in a peaceful, in a prayerful, in a loving way. We are so glad to see all our relatives here today. It is a good day to be indigenous. I am here today to ask the President Biden for a pardon on my charges, my false bogus charges. I stood up against the KXL pipeline and I encourage you all to sign the petition to drop the tar charges. Leave a weapon at Taco Pluriano. Hey. Huh. My name is Jason Charger. I'm from the Shine River Tribe. I represent a small number of youth in my community called the Seventh Offenders. I created this organization because I recognized as Standing Rock. Hello. That our youth were not being heard. And that it's important to 
or uplift our young voices into the transition of adulthood, into this world we live in, an unjust world of BIPOC people being brutalized and terrorized by an unjust society. Hello? I too face the kicks of and I am also facing charges up to a year in prison or in jail. For locking down to a water pump station that was going to use our water to pollute our people, to pollute our, our community. I live not only 40 miles away from that pump station, so that encouraged me to protect my people and to stand what I believe in and protect not only the water for our young people here, but also for the future generations. So I want to thank you all for coming here. And I want to thank the, the runners who ran the first time. I want to recognize them for their sacrifices, for coming back, for facing this president, this president who's doing lip service for our people. Mm -hmm. We did this once in 2016, those youth who ran from Standing Rock, South, South North Dakota to Washington, D.C. to hold accountable President Obama for the atrocities for the lip service of the Standing Rock youth, and not only that of the Ocheti Shakoi. And I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna honor the youth today for the transition of the torch, for the passing off of the fire, that you youth, we know what you are going through right now, what you are facing. We have stood where you be stood, but no, you are not alone. And we are gonna be here beside you every step of the way. One pipeline, two pipelines, three pipelines, no DAPL, Dakota Access, KXL. These are all black snakes. These are all affecting our people. And we will stand together united as relatives, as one, eliminating these invisible lines that separate us called state lines, eliminating these res lines that separate us as a people and coming together as one and letting them know throughout 500 years of oppression, we are still here and we are still the Shati Shakoi. We are still the First Nations people of this turtle island. And we are here to protect it and to remind them that this is our land. And we cannot trespass on stolen land. Ahom, Watakiwayasi. From the Lakota Nation, we love you all. Hey, we thank you, Asi. Thank you, Oscar and Jacelyn. Now we are going to ask our next our next speaker to take the stage. Crystal Cavalier Keck is a member of the Okanichi Band of the Saw Pony Nation and is the founder of the Missing Murdered Indigenous Coalition of North Carolina. She is the chair of the Environmental Justice Committee of the NAACP. She works with the Native Organizers Alliance, and she is a community organizer against the proposed Mountain Valley Pipeline South Gate project. The Mountain Valley Pipeline is a natural gas pipeline that is to cross over 350 miles of land from West Virginia down to North Carolina. Mountain Valley Pipeline needs water permits from the Army Corps of Engineers to cross. They are fighting this project for the same reasons we are. Let's welcome Crystal. Me could have been Chen Kiyohe, Nahan PP say, Me, my Crystal, me, my Okanichi Saponi, me, my Mebin Watiwa. So I just gave you a traditional Tutelo greeting. I said, my name is Crystal. You're welcome here. I'm a citizen of the Okanichi Band of the Savoni Nation, and I live in Mebane, North Carolina. This is my husband, Jason Campbell's Cake, Crazy Bear. So I'm fighting with my friend Desiree, wherever she is, raise your hand, Desiree. We're fighting the Mountain Valley Pipeline and Mountain Valley Pipeline Southgate Extension. It's a fried gas pipeline that's coming 303 miles from West Virginia, Virginia, and it's picking up in Chatham, Virginia, coming all the way to Hot River, five miles from where I live. We are tired of these pipelines. It's been going on for several years. It is a fracked gas pipeline. They want to bore under several rivers, and then they want to run adjacent. This is terrible. It is going through black and indigenous communities, especially here in Alamance County and Rockingham in Chatham, Virginia. Um, 
It is going through the homelands of the Okanichi, the Monacan, the Sara, and the Saponi tribes. We are still here and we are still fighting. So Jason, you want to sing this song? <clears throat> it's a Mother Earth honoring song. organizer who lives in the Anishinaabe territories of so-called Michigan. She and her family have been supporting the fight against the Enbridge Line 5 fight for years. Enbridge's Line 5 pipeline is a fossil fuel pipeline that crosses Anishinaabe territory without consent. The tribes were never properly consulted about this pipeline and now it runs about 23 million gallons of oil and natural gas liquids daily. Tribes in Michigan have been fighting Line 5 for years now, and we are so happy to have a community voice here with us who has been in tribal communities in Michigan for years. Let's get a round of applause for Holly Bird. Traverse City and Donjaba, San Felipe Pueblo and Donjaba, Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians community in Donjaba. Miigwech, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. And um, I'm going to tell you a little story. July 25th, 2010, B6, on Bridges Line B6, started leaking in the Talmadge Creek in Kalamazoo. Millions, gallons, millions of gallons of oil went into the Kalamazoo River, ruining wetlands, killing over 730,000 animals, creating toxic homes. People are sick and people are dying still to this day. They went to clean it up and used their own insurance company to do it and their own cleanup company. They paid themselves to clean up and it's still not clean and people are still dying. This is the legacy of Onbridge. This is the legacy of the same people that hold line five up in our straits and that hold line three in Minnesota. This is what we call a company with unclean hands. There is blood on their hands. And there will continue to be blood on their hands as long as they have their oil in our water. Now I come from Traverse City, Michigan. It's a beautiful place. It's paradise where we live. It's Anishinaabe territory. And we have treaty rights to the waters that we subsist on. We, we fish. We live on that water. The animals around us live on that water, and so does everybody else. And what do they do? Back in 1953, they put a pipeline through it. They violated our treaty rights, which required consultation. Never had them. My husband was the very first person, very first tribal council member that they consulted three years ago. And you know what they told him? When he asked him what kind of a plan they had to clean up the water if there was ever a leak under ice. They said they were going to take chainsaws, cut through the ice, and wick it out with pieces of wood. Okay, God. 
in essence, they told us they didn't have a plan. Now, I talked to somebody this morning for an environmental uh, journalism class, a representative of Onbridge, and I had got to debate for this class. And I said to him, what's more important to you? The right to eat and live off the water that you grew up on? Or your right to make fucking money? Excuse mm. my language. <laughs> He didn't have a good answer. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you there is lawsuits going on. We're fortunate we have an attorney general who finally decided to do something. She's in the process of suing Onbridge uh, for the for the agreements that they have for, for taking out the line five, the aging line five tunnel, which is already broken down and has uh, is supposed to be out by May. She's also suing on, uh, we had a backwards governor, Governor Snyder, who headed up the Flint water scandal, still not cleaned up by the way. And um, he did a backwater or backroom agreement with Onbridge to get this tunnel through. Now the tunnel is a direct violation of the natural law of the Anishinaabe with the water. It's a cultural violation and it's a, it's a, it's a living violation. We can't live in water that's being polluted. We all know this, it's common sense. Oil pipelines are not subsistent with living and with life. They just aren't. Um, I've spoken to them, I've, I've spoken to their, their hearings. You know, they got a bottom line. This is the cheapest way of doing it. They know that solar energy is possible. They know that green energy is possible. In fact, they're investing in it but they're dragging their feet and trying to build new pipelines. Why is that, right? They're saying it's gonna take time for us to, to peel back from fossil fuels. Well then stop building your pipelines. There's only one bottom line for them and it's not people. It's, it's them and, and their money. So I'm calling out to you, President Biden. Thank you very much for coming today. <laughs> And Lieutenant General Spellman, up there somewhere. We're telling you to do the right thing. You guys were put into place to protect us. We elected you. We put you there. Protect us, protect our water, make sure we can live with it. Miigwech, everyone. hear me all right then thank you holly and now we would like to uh, invite sarah young bear brown to the stage she's from the meskwaki nation down in iowa and the people there have also been fighting the dakota access pipeline a little applause for sarah sure everybody can see. Hello, my name is Sarah Young Bear, and I come from Washington from my home in Iowa. I'm from the Meskwaki Nation in Tama, Iowa. I'm deaf, I'm the mother of two children, and I've come all this way with my family and friends to stand in support of the Standing Rock Youth Council and all the people that will be affected by the potential dangers that comes with the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota and Enbridge Line 3 in Minnesota. I've come here to, to remind President Joe Biden of his commitment to all Native people
to respect and honor the treaty and the rights of all tribes that were made with the federal government, including the people of Standing Rock, Sioux Nation, and the Shine River, Sioux National Nation, I'm sorry, and the men and women of the Ananashbe tribe. We need to stop these pipelines. The children and women that live on the Standing Rock Reservation and the Cheyenne River Sioux Re and the, um, the lands in the Minnesota have the most to lose from the construction of these pipelines that carry dirty tar and sand oil. Their land and their water will be affected negatively when this pipeline breaks and the damage eventually spreads to the population off of the reservation. The pipelines always break. We need to stop these pipelines. In North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and other places that are home to indigenous people, the threat to the health and the well-being of the environment is real. These pipelines do nothing to improve the lives of the people. They do nothing to improve the lives of the people they lay closest to, and they benefit only the companies that build them. It's time to put our natural environment and our indigenous people before the well-beings of these oil companies. Let's all work hard. Let's all work hard developing cleaner solutions to our energy needs. Again, we're asking President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris to stop the pipelines. Kill the black snake. I want you guys to repeat with me. Kill the black snake. 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 Stand it up. speakers there were for this? No, I think they're just, keep going. <laughs> I'm starting to think I need to sit down on the ground to do this. Do you know if there's contact information for speakers available somewhere? Okay. All right, thank you, Sarah. And now we will have uh, some of our SR youth come up here. Our Standing Rock youth come up here. If we could have all the Standing Rock youth um, in the crowd to raise their fists for this, for the duration of this, and come up to the front as far up as you can possibly get, um, try to stand together. Come up here, there's lots of room. <laughs> All right, can we get our fists in the air, please? Thank you. We, the youth of the Standing Rock and Cheyenne River Nations, urge you to support us in asking President Biden to shut down the Dakota Access Pipeline. The continued dependence on fossil fuels is destroying our way of life and our Mother Earth. Five years ago today, we began our historic battle against the Black Snake. The, 
the Dakota Access Pipeline by opening the Sacred Stone Camp. Shortly after that, the youth of our tribal nations brought worldwide attention to our fight by running across the country to hand deliver a petition to the U.S. government officials to urge them to stop construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. People from all over the world joined us on our homelands at the Achete Shakowi resistance camp. The Dakota Access Pipeline, which went through our treaty lands without consultation, is and has always been operating illegally and without proper permits. It puts the communities, lands, and waters of the Standing Rock and Cheyenne River Sioux nations at risk. We are doing this action today in solidarity and collaboration with our Anishinaabe relatives to the east who are fighting Enbridge's Line Creek Pipeline. Both projects are in violation of our treaty rights and have been improper, improperly granted permits for the near. Permits by the Army of Engineers. Line 3 did not even receive an environmental impact statement to consider impacts upon the native community. Line 3 didn't even receive an environmental impact statement to consider impacts upon native communities. We are demanding President Biden to stop these climate destroying projects, consult tribes and help this country build back fossil free. We have been given another opportunity to protect our water and respect the rights of indigenous people and Mother Earth. This is our moment. We are demanding once again to ensure that change begins with this administration. The problem is clear and we need to move towards a solution. So please help lead our nation toward putting people over profit and keep the oil in the soil. President Biden, you can help right or wrong by shutting down the Dakota Access Pipeline today. Be the climate president you claim to be. Stop line three. Build back fossil free. Okay, we're gonna do some chants now. Mini we chony. Water is life. Mini we chony. Water is life. Mini we chony. Water is life. We stand. We stand. For our brothers. For our brothers. And our sisters. And our sisters. We stand. We stand.
be clean. Right now. What? Alright. And then we're gonna have Wabi Mon <laughs> Wabi Gone Ikwe. Have Silas Nealand um, along with his chaperone to speak about line three. We will be followed by Tara Huska, mm -mm. who closed mm -mm. the grassroots rally. Mm -mm. Close. Close. <laughs> we shouldn't, but I'm not gonna live streamer. There's no way. <laughs> 